Good evening, Ripley Tabernacle Baptist Church. Hope you all are having a good evening so far. Um, hope you enjoyed this morning's services for our second week of our refreshed return. Um, we, of course, I know I had a good time, um, and we just hope that you were having a good time, that you were blessed through it, and uh, we just want you to stay tuned this week. A few announcements. Stay tuned throughout the week. We are not sure yet what next Sunday holds, which is the 7th, I believe. Uh, we don't know yet how we're going to do that service or when we're going to start adding in Sunday night, Sunday school, all of that. Um, so stay tuned this week. We will get those announcements out as soon as we know them. Um, so just be, keep your ear out for those. But this Wednesday night, we start Creation Club. We will have a pre-K, uh, uh, preschool class in the preschool room. We'll have a K kindergarten through second grade upstairs in the activity building, as well as a third through sixth grade class in the activity building. That's all of our Creation Club classes. Now, those grades are for the uh, grade you just finished, not the one you're going into, but the one you just finished, all right? And then we also are starting our teens back this Wednesday. This Wednesday, teenagers, we're going to meet together again as a youth group. That will be next door in the activity building upstairs as well, all right? Uh, a few prayer requests. Please remember Miss Betty Clendenin. Um, I'm not, I don't know the latest on her right now, but I do know she was in the hospital. Hospital. So keep her in your prayers. Pray for Pastor and Miss Denise as they just dropped off Anna and James in Missouri. And they're heading back this week, Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure when exactly, but I know they are driving back this week. So keep them in your prayers. I know it's going to be a stressful and just emotional time for them. Uh, so please do that for us. And I thank you for all the prayers you guys have given uh, for Emily and baby Jude. Uh, he arrived Thursday. It was 8 pounds, 12 ounces, 20 inches long. Um, we were actually, we were only in the hospital from Thursday morning to Friday afternoon, so God really blessed um, and kept uh, mom uh, and baby safe. So appreciate all the prayers and all the calls and texts and all that good stuff. Um, but other than that, I have no more announcements, no more prayer requests. Uh, so let's pray, and we're going to get into our service for this evening. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, we love you. And just thank you for the medium of technology that we can use in the time being uh, to still hear your message preached, to still hear your song sung. Lord, I ask that you would be honored this evening. I ask that hearts would be helped, that souls would be uplifted. Lord, that you would be honored and glorified. I ask that you would be with Brother Ed as he brings the message. Lord, that you would open hearts. I understand he's already recorded the message. Uh, but Lord, you can still work and use it and open hearts. I ask that you would do that. Lord, I thank you for Ed and his stand that he takes for the gospel and for the Bible and that he will not back down. Lord, I thank you for him. I pray that you would use this message to stir up something in our hearts that we might see revival in our nation. Lord, we love you and thank you. Pray that you would uh, just bless the remainder of our time together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Uh, the choir is going to sing a song now entitled, It is Finished. In the Bible, in John chapter 19, the Bible says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. And in verse 30 says this, And Jesus, or when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Praise the Lord that on the cross, Jesus did not say, I did most of it. He did not say, I went 90% of the way, or I went 99.9% .9 of the way. When Jesus said, it is finished, what he meant is every drop of blood had been shed. Every sin had been forgiven. And when he said, it is finished, he meant the work is completed. He says, I have done everything I can do. I, I've done everything I need to do. This morning, Christ has said for you, the work is is accomplished. He did everything. Will you accept it this morning? If you're here and you're not saved, I pray that you will accept the gift that Christ so freely gave on that cross of Calvary. When he said it is finished, what he was saying is Josh Gerwitz doesn't have to do any works. Josh Gerwitz doesn't have to do anything because my precious blood was shed on this cross. So listen to the choir as I sing it is finished.
chose you before you knew who I was I heard you crying down in Egypt's land you are my people I am your God a covenant you can't comprehend I'm gonna take you on a journey we're gonna walk across the sea children don't you worry let me set your mind at ease you do what's possible you do the praise I'll do the miracles I'll make the way you put your trust in me you keep the faith and then when you can't go on that's when I'll do the He is our God He saved us from a wicked world of sin So why do we worry When it all falls apart When the storming times of life Come crashing in we have but one purpose that's to trust with all our heart then to stand back and wonder as we watch the waters part and he said you do what's possible you do the praise I'll do the miracles, I'll make the way. You put your trust in me, you keep the faith. And then when you can't go on, that's when I'll do the miracles. in me you do the praise I'll do the miracles I'll make the way you put your trust in me you keep the faith and when you can't go on that's when I All right, good evening and welcome to our Sunday night church service. Uh, of course, this is pre recorded, but thank you for turning in tonight. And, uh, and turn your Bibles to the book of James, chapter number 1, verses 26 and 27. James chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. How's your religion? That's our uh, subject for this evening. Before we get into that, uh, congratulations, Pastor Josh and Miss Emily. Have a new baby boy, uh, Jude Allen Gerwich, born on Thursday, May the 28th. So congratulations are to them. <clears throat> and also on a sadder note, I uh, ask your prayers and, of course, condolences. Send our condolences out to the family of Tammy Robb, <laughs> who passed away on Thursday. God has called her home. Great lady. Used to come to this church, sang in, in the youth group here, and was in the youth group and served in this church for many years, and just a dear, sweet lady, and it grieves our heart. But God knows best, and so just pray for that family. In James chapter 1, verse 26, If any man among you 
seem to be religious. All right, notice that word. And bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that you've imparted into our hearts. And we claim the promise you've given us that the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us into all truth. So Holy Spirit, do that tonight. I pray your power and your conviction. Pray folks will be saved and that Christians will be challenged to examine our hearts and, and live a life that glorifies you. And bless now, lead and guide our thoughts and glorify Jesus, we pray in Christ's name. And amen. <laughs> Religion. And that's a word that uh, causes all kinds of different emotions. I mean, religion. If I say, when I say that word, some people uh, have a smiley face. Some maybe have a sad face. Some people have had good experiences. Others have had bad experiences. But nonetheless, it's a Bible word, and we find it in the text that we just read from James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. And uh, looking into religion, I, I did some internet research, and, they, and it says there are over 4,000 religions in the world, over 4,000. And then also said that, uh, I guess they do these kinds of studies, they said 84% of the world uh, population claims to be religious. And the other 16% claim not to be or to be something else. Religion, religion. So let's start tonight by asking ourselves, what does that word mean? Religion. So I, I looked it up in my vines, and also I got an 1800 uh, Webster's Dictionary and looked up the word religion and did some internet research and jotted down some things about what does the word religion mean? All right, religion, if I found me, is a belief in a divine or supernatural power which is to be obeyed and worshiped. Religion is a belief in a higher power, uh, I like to say God. And then it's also in the revelation of His will to man and man's duty to obey that revealed will and to man's accountability to that higher power, either in reward or punishment. Um, religion is a belief in God and adherence to the code and the doctrines that He gives us. And I, and I looked and there was lots and lots of stuff, but I got a simple brain, so I just wrote down a few things here. I said, religion in essence, in essence is a belief in God. Number one. Number two, religion is a belief in a revelation of God's will. And number three, it's adherence to that revealed will. So I asked myself the question, am I religious? Ask yourself the question, are you religious? By the definition we just gave, if you believe in God, number one, you believe in His revealed will, number two, and you believe in adherence to that will, then it can be said that you are a religious person. So I confess tonight, you're looking at a religious person. I believe in God, our Creator, created the heavens, the earth, the world, and all things, spoken into existence by His Word, it is held to in place and together. And I believe in His real will, revealed will. It's this book I hold right here. It's called the Bible. It is all scriptures given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, yes. I believe in God, and yes, I believe I have in my hand His revealed will, and yes, I believe that you ought to be adherents to it. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are, notice, we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So yes, I believe in God, and two, yes, I believe I got His revealed will, and number three, I believe that's, what, that's, that's God's will for us to adhere, to obey, and to do what He tells us to do. So yes, I'm religion. And if you believe those same things, then you are a religious person. Now in our text here in James, James, and let me just say this, there are many false religions in the world. In James here in these verses, we're not, he's not dealing with false religions. False doctrine, false teaching, error and deception, the lies of Satan, that, uh, that to those who change the truth of God into a lie, that they might uh, condemn souls to an eternal hell. There are many places in the Bible where it deals with false doctrine, false teachers, and the lies and deception of Satan. But in James, James is writing to who? 
James chapter 1 verse 2, he said, My brethren. James chapter 1 verse 9, he says, Let the brother of low degree. In verse number 16, he says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. In verse number 19, he said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren. In verse number 26, he said, Of any man among you. James is writing to, to the family of God. He's writing to brothers and sisters in Christ. And that word brethren appears over and over and over and over throughout the book of James. James is a practical book about practical Christian living. So James is writing to the family of God. Now what is a family? A family has a common father, a common home, and a common inheritance. So we as Christians are a family. We have a common father, it's God above. We have a common home, it's a place called heaven. We're just aliens and strangers here. And we have a common inheritance, the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, tree of life, and all those wonderful things that God has prepared. So James is writing to believers, to the family of God. Now in this passage in James 1, verse 26 and 27, he talks about two types of religion. Notice in verse number 27, it says pure religion. In verse number 26, you see the words, religion is vain. So there's pure religion and there's vain religion. So those, those, those are, so how is your religion tonight? I'm going to say that over and over. That's the question that we must ask, and it's an important question that we must ask ourselves. How is our religion? Do I have a pure religion? Now the word pure means clean, free of defilement, without spot, unsought, untarnished. It's a pure religion. It's a pure belief in God, belief in His revealed will, and belief in obeying His revealed will. So I have, I have here a cough, I have a, have a handkerchief, a white handkerchief, and it's white. And it's clean. So I'm going to use this to illustrate for you tonight. This is, this is pure religion. It's clean. It's free of defilement. It's without spot. It's not soiled. I mean, it's not been used. It has no germs on it. This is an illustration right here of pure religion. So I ask you again the question, how's your religion? Do you have pure religion? Religion that is clean, pure, and free, without spot, and unsoiled, and untarnished. But then, then in this passage, he also talks about, in verse number 26, says, this man's religion is vain. This man's religion is vain. And then, he, and then verse 27, it goes, pure and undefiled. So there's, there is pure religion, but then there is also religion, belief in God, and belief in His revealed will, the Bible, and belief in obey, and obeying it. There are religion, all right, there are religious people whose religion is not pure, well, but rather it's vain and it's defiled. What the word, what the word defiled, uh, vain religion is defiled religion, and defiled religion is vain religion. So let me expound upon that. What does the word defiled mean? It means it's soiled and it's stained, all right, and it's tarnished. And then and vain, and defiled religion is vain religion because the word vain means empty profitless, useless, unfruitful. See, God God does not bless vain, defiled religion. Where are God's blessings? God's blessings are on pure religion. Now, to illustrate uh, defiled religion, I went out to my uh, tool room, and I got this cloth out there, and I brought it in. Now, right here, this right here is an illustration of defiled religion. So, how's your religion? Is it pure religion? Or is it defiled religion? Now this, uh, this cloth right here, I mean, you can't smell it, but I can. It's got diesel on it. It's got, it's got gasoline on it. It's got oil stains on it. It's got grease stains on it. It's got all kinds of dirt on it. Yeah, it probably even got some barnyard dirt on it, because that's where it came from. All right, so how's your religion tonight? Huh? Is, is this your religion? Is your religion defiled? Or do your, is your religion pure tonight? Now, defiled religion is is vain religion. Well, let me put it to you this way. Now, vile, vile means it's useless and it's, and it's profitless and it's fruitless. Now, this cloth right here, this deviled cloth right here, how many of you ladies would like to wipe your uh, dishes with this cloth right here? You say, oh no, not me. How, how, how would you like to dry your hands on this cloth right here? You say, oh no, no, not, no, not me. How would you like to wipe your windows down with this cloth right here? You say, oh no, no, not at all. How would you like to wipe your eyeglasses down with this cloth right here? You wouldn't want to do it. So what good is this cloth? 
This cloth's not much good at all, is it? It's pretty useless because it's defiled, it's dirty, it's stained. So it's not much use at all. Of course, that reminds us of a parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter number 13. In Luke chapter number 13, let me read it to you, beginning in verse number 6. And he spake this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit. He sought fruit thereon, and he found none. And he said to the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. And then he said, Cut it down. Why cumber the ground with it? He said, cut it down. Why? Because it's vain, it's useless, it's unfruitful. It's not bearing figs, so just cut it down. It's just oh, taking up space, cut it down. And, uh, and, then they, and then the answering said unto him, the dresser of the vineyard said to him, Let alone this year, till I dig about it and dung it. And then verse 9 he said, If it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. So that fig tree was vain, it was fruitless, it was unuseful. So, so James here is, now he's talking about uh, pure religion. How's your religion? And he's talking about defiled religion, which is vain religion. It's not good for anything. Now, that brings us to this thought right here. How, all right? Now, if, oh, what, what would I do with this cloth? I'd take that to my wife, and she'd take that, and she'd throw that in the washing machine, and she would throw in there some gain, maybe, or some tide, and certainly she'd put in there some Clorox bleach and, and whatever else she might put in there, a whole bunch of it, because it's pretty dirty cloth. She'd put that in there and wash it all up, and then it comes out like this. It'll come out white again. Now, that's the good thing about the God we serve. Hey, are, hey, are you a religious person? Do you believe in God? Do you believe this Bible's revealed will of God? Do you, do you believe Christians ought to obey it? Well, then, when you, and then I say to you, how's your religion? And you say, well, okay, I've been, my religion is defiled. And if you, the Bible calls upon us to examine ourselves, examine yourselves. In 1 Corinthians, it tells us to examine yourselves. So when you begin to examine yourself, and the Holy Spirit's convicting you, and you say, okay, well, I'm a, let me examine myself. And when you start really looking at yourself, what do you see? Do you see some pride? Do you see some selfishness? Are you seeing this right here? I see some pride. I see selfishness. Uh, I see the love of money. I see disobedience. I see the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of lying. Uh, I see neglect. I see greed and vainglory. So, hey, if that's, if that's in your life, then this is you right here. But the good news is, God can put you in the washing machine and clean you up. Amen? How does He do that? 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 2, He says, let me just read it to you. 1 John chapter 1. This is a great passage. He said in verse 6, If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not, fruit, do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to do what? If we'll confess our sins, He's faithful to cleanse us. The verse says He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. And make you spotless and white. Hallelujah. We, if we say we have no sin, we, just, we make Him a liar and His Word is not in us. So in this passage in James chapter 1, he says, He's talking about a vain religion. All right, a vain, useless. It's not good for much of anything. It's not fruitful. Verse 26, he talks about that a little further. In verse 26, he said this, But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, verse 25, and continueth therein, be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed, verse 25. So who's blessed? Those that continue in the word. Now, verse 26, If any man among you, <clears throat> any man among you, seem to be religious. The word seem means to think, to suppose, to be of opinion. So if there are any man among you, he's writing to brethren, he's writing to Christians, and the challenge is, how's your religion? And now he's, now he's saying to them, there's any man among you that seems or thinks or supposes or has opinion that, that what? All right, that what? That, that your religion's pure. See, people deceive themselves, and they say, I'm just fine, I'm okay. But James is putting out a challenge here. Is there anything among you that seemeth, who thinks or supposes or has the opinion that his religion is pure? So, all right, and he said, then he said this, and he bridleth not his tongue. What, what are we talking about, James? James says, all right, if, if this, if you think you're this, 
and you're not, you're this, then he's, James is telling us that your tongue's going to reveal it. Your tongue is a window into your life. And your tongue will reveal whether this is you or whether not this is you. So he says, and he bridles not. He doesn't curb. He doesn't restrain. He doesn't hold in check his tongue, his words, the words that he says. And then he said this in verse 26. And he said, but he said, he said this, but he deceiveth his own heart. He's led himself to believe a lie. So here's a man or a woman, and they're walking, and they're walking in strife and division and fuss and fight and arguing and all kinds of ungodliness and, and, and hate and malice and ill will. And they, and, they, and, they, and they go to church on Sunday, and they, and they, and they shout glory to God. And they walk out the back door, and they say, hey, I, I'm okay. This is me. This, and that's what they think, and that's what they suppose themselves to be And when they think. But then they go out, and then they open their mouths. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, is what Jesus said. And James here in chapter number 3 and verse number 1 said, My brethren, be not many masters or teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation or judgment. For in many things we offend, or we err, or we sin. If any man offend not, or does not err or sin in his words, the things that come out of his mouth... He said, the same is a perfect man, or a mature, full of age, a spirit-filled man. He is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. And he said in verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. So the tongue is an unruly evil. All right, no carnal, worldly Christian, all right, he cannot tame his tongue. And what will happen is, uh, the words of his mouth will reveal as a window into his life, and the words of your mouth say, this is you, or they say, this is you. How's your religion? That's what it will reveal. And that's what James is saying here in verse number 26, that the words of your mouth, they are a window into what kind of your religion, what it is. All right, now, he also deals in next verse, verse 27, then he turns into verse number 27. And just like the words of your mouth will reveal if your religion is vain and defiled and impure, then he also gives us in verse 27 some things that are in our lives that reveal and say to the world that that man's religion is pure. And the world is looking and the world is judging. And they're looking to me and going, Ed Austin's religion is pure or Ed Austin's religion is defiled. And the world's looking at you and they're, and they're thinking whether they say it or not. And they know whether your religion is pure or whether your religion is defiled. So in verse number 27, he said, pure religion. Now notice this, and undefiled before God. See, God sees. I mean, you can deceive yourself, but you can't deceive God. God knows. All right, I can, I can lie to myself and tell myself I'm okay and tell myself I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual Christian when I ain't, and I can tell myself a lot of things, but God sees and God knows, and the world around you is going to see and know by the words that come out of your mouth. So he says this, he said, I'm pure, pure religion and undefiled before God. Wow, now that's pretty, that's pretty heavy, is it not? Before God, He sees, He knows. Who are you deceiving? You ain't deceiving God. Who am I deceiving? I ain't deceiving God. None of us are deceiving God. God sees and God knows. All right, now before God and in the eyes of God, this is what James is saying, in the eyes of God, here is pure religion. And He tells us what it is. In James chapter 1, verse number 27, He says, pure religion is this. That's what He said. And for the Father is this, two things. Number one, it's to visit the fatherless and the widows. Pure religion is to visit, to go see and to look at and to go to help and to relieve. Who? The fatherless. Those who have no father figure in their life. Those who have no father to love them and to provide for them and to guide them and to cherish them. And then not only the fatherless, but widows, ladies who have lost their husband. And they have, no, they have no husband to love them and to guide them and to provide for them and to cherish them. So when you see the fatherless and the widows, you're seeing those, that, and notice it says in their affliction, in their trouble, and in their trial, all right? I mean, they, they, they have troubles, and they have trials, and just to, to pay the bills, and to eat, and to, and to keep things going, and to keep things functioning. And when you see those, all right, pure religion, all right, you remember the, the Good Samaritan? 
All right, how they, the guy went down and, uh, the, on, the, on the road to Jericho and, and he fell among thieves and they left him half dead. And then, they, of course, the one comes by and he walked around. And another came by and walked around. And the good Samaritan came by and he went over and he bound up his wounds, put him on his donkey and he took him down to the inn and he took care of him and paid for his, his room and said, if there be more, when I come back, I'll pay it. So who was, who was a neighbor to that man? Who, was, who had pure religion that day? Was it the scribe? Was it the Pharisee? No, it wasn't them. Their religion was this, all right? That was their religion. But that good Samaritan who went over to that poor guy and helped him up and took him and took care of him, he came to visit him. He came alongside to help him. He's like the Holy Spirit comes along to help. He had the pure religion. And that's what James is saying here. He says, pure religion is this. It is to visit to help, to relieve the fatherless and the widows. And then he said, number two, pure religion is this, to keep himself unspotted from the world. To keep yourself, what? Unspotted. That means without blemish, none soiled. All right, to keep yourself unspotted. Don't be like this, but be like this when it comes to the world. Don't, don't allow your life to be spotted, grease, mud, all that stuff by the world. All right? And so, so pure religion keeps himself. He guards himself against this becoming this, against becoming uh, entangled in why and tied in with the world. And all, jam. First John talks about all is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. None of this is of the Father. It's of the devil. So, uh, so a pure religion Pure religion, pure belief in God, and pure belief in His revealed will, and adherence to that will, and to what He says right here in this book, what it does, what it will do for you, where false shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed hereto, according to thy word, Psalm 119. So when you show pure religion does this, it says, I'm going to keep myself from the world. I'm not going to get entangled in the world's philosophy, in the world's wisdom, and the errors of the world. I, I know, I'm going, to, I'm going to get right in here in this blessed old book, and that's where I want to live. That's where I want to day, day by day by day. I'm going to live right there. Hallelujah, amen. Now, Jesus said the same thing. You say He did? Yes, He did. Mark chapter 12. Turn to Mark chapter 12 and look in verse number 29. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Jesus answered... And this is what he said. He said, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. In verse 30, Mark 12, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none greater commandment than these. And what Jesus is saying here in Mark is what James is saying in James chapter 1. You say, how is that? Well, when a man loves God with all of his heart and all of his mind and all of his soul and all of his strength, you know what he's going to do? He's going to keep himself unspotted from the world. And so when you keep yourself unspotted from the world, then you're evidencing and manifesting to the world that you love God and that you have pure religion. And Jesus said the second commandment is just like it, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. And when you visit and when you come alongside to help the fatherless and the widows and the poor and the downtrodden and of this world, and when you do that, then what are you doing? You are loving your neighbor as yourself. And so you're demonstrating to the world by loving your neighbor that you have pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, pure religion. Pure religion. I thought about pure religion, and I jotted down three things. Pure religion is pure in its purpose. Is it not? 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And when you're pure in your purpose, then you have pure religion. And therefore, when your purpose is pure, when your purpose is to glorify God in all you do, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, when that is, a, when that is your purpose then your religion will be pure because what will you do? You will visit the fatherless and the widows and you will keep yourself unspotted from the world. Pure religion is pure, number two, in its motivation. And the Bible says, and of course we just read it in Mark chapter 12, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind and all thy strength. And when, you're, when, you're, when your purpose is pure and your motive is pure, then your religion will be pure. And you know what you'll do? You'll visit the fatherless and the widows. Pure religion, number three, is pure in its methods. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 15, according to the word of the Lord, 
according to the word of the Lord. David brought the, wanted to bring the ark up, but he didn't do it according to the word of the Lord. And Uzzah lost his life. Then they went back and they regrouped and they did it according to the word of the Lord. And so, if, so pure religion is pure in its purpose, glorify God, pure in its motivation, love of God, and it's pure in its methods according to the Word of God. Right here. This is our instruction manual. This is it right here. This teaches us how to live and prepares us to die. And so pure religion is right here. has its instruction book. Then there's vain religion. And vain religion is defiled. It's defiled in its purpose. What's its purpose? Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, When you pray, if you don't see that you don't pray to be seen of men. There are people who pray to be seen of men. And he said, When you do your alms, do not your alms to be seen of men. There are people who do alms, give gifts to the poor, and the reason they do it is to be seen of men. All right, those who pray and give alms and then and they and they fast and do these things to be seen of men, then right there is their religion. All right. Jesus said, Verily they have their reward. God ain't going to bless that. God does not smell upon that. God smiles upon religion that visits the widows and cause of love and cause of glory of God and because God blesses and smiles, and that's what God's will is. And then the pure, pure uh, vain religion, defiled religion, is defiled in its motivation. In Romans chapter 12, Paul wrote these words. He said, Let no man think more highly of himself than he ought to think. Defile religion, I mean, it's like a blowfish. You go to the beach and you go out on the boat and you catch a fish. You pull it up and I, I caught a blowfish and I pulled it up and that fish went. Shh. Well, there's people like that, aren't they? I mean, when their heads just go. Shh, and they think more highly of themselves than they ought to. Well, that man's religion is what? It's impure. All right, it's impure. It's vain. And then number three, a defiled religion is defiled in its methods. Jesus said in Mark chapter 7, laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men. They lay aside according to the word of the Lord, and they hold to the traditions of men. So how's your religion? How's your religion? Is your religion pure? Or is your religion defiled? Oh, I remember, number one, I want to ask you tonight, I want to ask you this. How's your religion? Is it true or false? See, there's a lot of false religion in the world. There's a lot of false religious people in the world. Do you truly from your heart believe in God? Believe this book to be the Word of God? And believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? And have you embraced true and pure religion? Have you embraced that tonight? Yeah, I have, the Bible says in Romans 3 that all sin comes short of the glory of God. That means all. It says all means all. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wage of sin is what? It's death, eternal separation from God. But the gift of God is what? It's eternal life. Acts 16.31, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How's your religion tonight? Is it true or is it false? Well, all right, is it true? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I encourage you to have true religion. You say, well, true religion, pure religion, where you acknowledge that you're a sinner and you can't save yourself and you fall down before God and you, can, you, and you trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and you take Him into your heart and life as your Lord and your Master. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, delivered from hell and eternal destruction. So I encourage you tonight, trust Jesus as your Savior. Amen. That's number one. How's your religion? All right, get a hold of Jesus. All right, get covered in the blood. Get washed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. How's your religion? Number two, I would say to the Christian. So you say, well, I've come to Jesus and I've been saved. You know, Peter, Jesus told Peter in the upper room, He said, He that is clean need not to be washed, save his feet only. Because you go out into the world, Peter, and as you walk through the world, you get a dirty feet. And so have you, have you embraced true religion, Jesus and the shed blood? Have you went out into the world? And now, and now your religion is defiled, all right? It's become spotted by the world, all right? Is that, is that you tonight? Is that you? Is that you? Or have you, or, if it is, then I encourage you to do what we talked about a little while ago. Turn over to 1 John chapter 1 and read down through them verses. and says, We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth not in us. But what a glorious promise. We shall confess our sins. He's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you backslidden? Now that's a word you don't hear a whole lot anymore. You used to hear it a lot in churches. A lot of times there used to be preachers preached a lot. Not just to the lost and doomed and on their way to hell to come and be saved. But they preached to Christians about being backslidden. 
All right, and then you can say, hey, hey, how's your religion? Is it pure? Are you, are you keeping a short account with God? Are you claiming 1 John chapter 1? Are you confessing your sins? I mean, I need to, and you do too. We need to do it often. We need to, we need to get into the book and live in the book and dwell in the book. That's what, that's what he said in verse number 25 there in James chapter 1. He talked about those who are, not, uh, who are doers of the Word and uh, not a forgetful hearer. And it says, who continue therein. You get in the book and continue you live in there today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day. In verse 25 of James chapter 1 says, and this man is blessed. That's why it's important. It's important that you examine yourself and say, do I have pure religion or do I have defiled religion? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have pure religion. Let's confess our sins to God and repent of them and get them under the blood and live close to God and dwell in the book and God will bless you and smile upon you and then God can take you and use you and you'll be a fruitful Christian. But if you bow up, like my grandpa had an old milk cow and wanted me to help him load a milk cow one time. And that old cow decided she wasn't getting on the truck. And he pulled and I pushed and he pulled and I pushed and we thumped and beat around there. But that old cow bowed up and said, I ain't getting on that truck. And she didn't. All right. 1,200 pound cow whooped it. She didn't get on that truck. You know, there's Christians in the world just like that old milk cow. They just bow up. Holy Spirit's convicting you and drawing you right now, and yay, and you're deceiving yourself, but are you really? What are the words of your mouth saying about you? Are they saying this? Hey, what, what is your life saying about you? You know, well, the world knows and God knows. So then the smart thing and the wise thing to do is to quit bowing up and resisting and to just sell out to God. Amen. Present your body a living sacrifice, which is your holy and reasonable service. How about it tonight? How's your religion? Is it pure? Is your religion pure? Or is it defiled? The season's yours. I encourage you, if you never trusted Jesus, trust Him right now. And if you're a Christian, pray a prayer of repentance and have pure religion and no joy unspeakable and full of glory. Father, thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you for the truth that's in your word. Thank you for the challenge of the Holy Spirit from this passage. Lord, right now, help us to examine our hearts and look into our hearts and, and to consider the words of our mouth and the deeds and the things we do. And let's put them beside the measuring stick of your word. And the Holy Spirit, show us. Show us the truth about our religion. And Lord, I pray that folks right now are repenting and asking Jesus for forgiveness and cleansing. And Lord, they're committing their hearts and their lives to you. Lord, take this simple message and this simple truth and use it today and tomorrow and the next day and until Jesus comes. Lord, we need revival in this land and I, I understand in my heart. Father, if we're going to have revival, we're going to have to get serious with ourselves. We're going to have to examine ourselves and, and say, do I have pure religion or defiled religion? And God, I pray the Christians everywhere will say, I want pure religion. And they'll repent and they'll get in the Word and continue therein. And Lord, that they might be blessed and those that are around them might be blessed also. Thank you for your forgiveness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Remember, we'll be having church services on Wednesday night right here in the sanctuary, and you're invited to come be with us. God bless you and have a great week.